I bow to all the seekers of truth. You have been already told about these centers within us, their qualities, <coughs> and these three channels which constitute them. But one may ask why all these instrument placed within us, with what purpose? And why evolution has to go further? The reason is you have to now become the spirit. Go beyond your physical, emotional, mental being and become the spirit. Because spirit is the reflection of God Almighty. And spirit is the universal being within you. When you become the spirit, you become a universal being. You become a universal being doesn't mean that you take a certificate that you are a universal being, not at all. But This <coughs> state of being an universal being is manifested in you. It is manifested as a innate knowledge within you. As you have innate knowledge of colors now, you know this is this color, this is this color. You see it. In the same way, you become aware of you being a universal being. Means the microcosm becomes the microcosm. Again I say becomes. It's not just a feeling that you have become. Like a drop becomes the ocean. But again, it's not just a mental understanding, but it is a happening. And this happening takes place and you become a personality which leaves your boundaries, limitations, and you start seeing yourself as a very loving, affectionate, compassionate personality. When a child is born to a mother, she feels tremendous love for the child. From where does she get this love? Is innately built within her, and her love becomes doubled whatever love she had for herself starts flowing towards her child. But when you become a universal being, then your compassion takes a very universal personality. Then you do not think that you are an Australian or you are an Englishman or an Indian, but you just think that we are part and parcel of one universal personality. Now this feeling sometimes can be confusing, the word is. Feeling means I feel very happy, I feel very unhappy. It's all a mental project. But it becomes part and parcel of your awareness. 
This is the point I want to make very clearly to you, that it becomes just an awareness of collective consciousness. Then you can't avoid it, you can't just get rid of it. As you feel for your family, why do you feel? I mean, some even don't feel that. But most of you feel for your family, for your children, for your wives, for your brothers, sisters, father, mother. So why do you feel for them? Because you have expanded your personality. So you just feel it. But when your personality is that expanded, then the whole world seems to be your family, your relations. Then you do not see a person superficially, skin deep. But you see a person as a part and parcel of your being. Not only that, but as you can feel your own chakras on your fingertips, you can feel the chakras of another person on your fingertips. And then if you know how to correct, you can correct those centers and correct their problems. Today I'll just deal with one chakra, how when ch one chakra goes out of order, what happens to us. It's very interesting <coughs> to find out how we suffer from so many diseases because of one center. This center is the second center of Swadhisthana. Second center of the Swadhisthana is attached to the Nabi, the third center, and moves around the whole of that green area. It can go to the end, to the periphery, or it can be anywhere. And the duty of this center is mainly to convert the fat cells for the use of the brain. That medical science doesn't know. The other functions are to look after the liver, to look after the pancreas, look after the spleen, the kidneys, and the intestines. So when we start thinking too much, when we become futuristic, we start planning everything. I mean, sometimes people plan so much that you don't know where you are left with that plan. And that planning gives you a terrible mental exertion and you need more energy for your cells in the brain. So this has to pass, as you see here clearly, it has to pass into your brain, the energy. But when you think too much and plan too much, and if you are successful, then you develop an institution called ego, which is a big yellow bile in your head. That's not only thing. But as you start thinking too much, you neglect all these viscerals, all these organs in the viscera. And thus, you have very big problems of health to begin with. Of course, when you neglect your liver, you know liver is, they say, you will live till your liver will allow. Now this liver has to clean all the poison from your body. It comes out as heat and is delivered to the bloodstream. But when this is neglected, this poor liver doesn't know how to function without the energy and all the heat is accumulated in the liver. So a person suffers from liver trouble. Now the symptoms are he gets migraine, he cannot see the sun, then also he gets very hot-tempered, irritable, angry, because there is so much of heat. Then this heat passes. I was telling in Canberra, most of the 
bureaucrats have this problem <laughs> because they plan too much. And where do we land with that planning? God alone knows. So then this heat passes upward and downward. So when it passes downward, it gives you a very bad problem of terrible constipation because the heat constricts your intestine, large intestines. It also coagulates your kidneys, by which you have kidney trouble, you cannot pass your urine. Then you go on the dialysis and you are certified as really dead because you cannot last longer. So very expensive treatment, but doctors do not tell you frankly that, oh, you are not going to live. Then this heat can pass upward. And when it goes upward, it goes, say, to your right heart, as shown there. As a result of that, you develop asthma. Of course, asthma is connected also with the left side. So when there's triggering done by the left side, then you get this horrible disease called asthma. Then this heat can go upward and can ruin your throat. It can fro freeze your right arm. It can make your left eye red and also your left ear deaf. But by chance, if such a person is young and using too much physical energy and mental energy, as well as drinking a lot, he can have a very fatal heart attack, a very massive one, and he may die very early in age. You must know that all such attacks at a young age always are fatal. But when you See, to the other side is that there is a pancreas which is neglected. As a result of the neglect of the pancreas, you develop a disease called diabetes. Even the mothers who are extremely planning type and thinking type give that disease to their children. And children are born with diabetes. Then you have the third problem with the spleen. This is the most dangerous one. Nowadays, as the life is, we are all time-bound, very particular about time. As a result of that, we have become extremely hectic. Supposing you sleep very late in the night, then you have to get up early in the morning somehow, somehow get into your clothes and run to the office. Don't even take your breakfast, your wife will give you. So on the way in the car, you are eating your breakfast. And then you read the newspaper. You get a shock of your life because so many horrible things are happening. Newspapers will never give something that is good or is doing well. But something that has gone wrong to give you a sensational feeling. <laughs> it gives you sometimes horrible things. So early in the morning, if you read something horrible, being a human being, you are sometimes shocked. Then you find there is a jam on the way and you get so upset and all your peace is disturbed. Now this spleen is responsible for creating red blood corpuscles when you are in emergency. You must have seen when you eat your food and you run, you get a pain here. That's because your spleen is trying to pump out new RBCs. Now, to create that, poor this spleen has to work very hard. But it cannot understand the crazy, hectic personality. Every time it tries to cope with it, it goes crazy. So such a spleen becomes crazy, and ultimately with some triggering on the left-hand side, you develop a horrible disease called as leukemia or blood cancer. Then also your intestinal problems, the pain in the stomach and all that, indigestion, all go hand in hand only because of one center only on the right side. I have not even described the left side center. 
So, if I describe all these, then the whole materia medica will be described. It's like that. So, all the permutations and combinations of these centers give you physical problems, then the left side gives you the mental problem. Now, when the Kundalini rises, as I told you, she pierces through these centers and like pearls, they, it, the thread passes through different pearls. So the left and right hand are brought together and are nourished, and that's how you feel all right, your health is all right. So when the Kundalini rises and when she touches the spirit, the seat of the spirit here, the flow of the grace also on the sympathetic nervous system relaxes your center and nourishes them. Plus the rising of the Kundalini helps you such a lot. But unless and until you get awakening of your Kundalini and the last breakthrough of the last center, you cannot feel all right. And you have to work it out in a proper way, understanding the how to cure yourself or how to cure others. You have to also know how to protect yourself. But you definitely become a personality who can cure people, who can cure themselves. I mean, surgeons don't go to doctors at all, I have no question. As soon as they get into trouble, they know this burning started. Now, this is it, clear it out. They are the doctors, they get the diagnosis, they know the medicine, finished. So the first thing that happens to us that physically you feel perfect. After that you don't age also, your age comes down. You don't have wrinkles, you don't have worries, because all your worries are due to your left side or right side which is causing you two institutions of ego or superego. But when they are opened out, and when the Kundalini is out, then like a, I should say, like an opening of a chimney, the whole of this worrying and tension and all that passes out. And you have no tension, you are absolutely peaceful with yourself. You are peaceful with others, you are serene, and you get all your centers integrated. Now, this is a very big achievement, because I feel these days, it is not the problem of political differences, thanks to Gorbachev, who is a realized soul himself. But the main problem now is of fundamentalism, because everybody thinks that they are on the right path. Just imagine, you are worshipping Christ, and how can it be that your eyes are going round and round and round like that, because that Christ is deciding on your optic chasma. That's why he said, you'll be calling me Christ, Christ, and I won't recognize you. He has also said, those who are not against me are with me. So who are those? We should not be fundamentalists and try to find out who are those who are with Christ and who are not. I mean, the horrible things we have done. Of course, let's say the better about Hindu religion also, where it is said that in every human being we have the Spirit, and every human being is the temple of the Spirit. Still, we have a horrible thing called caste system in India. When Sri Rama ate the fruits from a very old lady of an Aboriginal clan, who had eaten them and seen that they are not sour, because he may not like sour food. And he really was so happy to eat them. He made, I mean, his life was written by a person called Valmiki, who was a decoit. Then he got his transformation, and he was born in a very low caste, if you want to think from modern angle, as a fisherman. Same thing with Shri Krishna. 
His life was written, Gita was written by Vyasa, who was the illegitimate child of a fisherwoman. Illegitimate child. So you can see how these people have tried to show in their own life that it's not important as to what work you do or what calling you have, is what is important is how pure you are, what level of spirituality we have. We have in India scheduled caste saints, so many of them. And we have all kinds of saints in our country. And one saint has said that, what's the use of me becoming a Brahmin, calling myself a Brahmin when I don't know what is Brahma is. He himself is condemning himself. Then another one saying, thank God I've become a scheduled caste because I do not oppress others. All the saints have said the same thing because they were integrated within themselves. They could see that all religions, all prophets, all great incarnations, all of them were born on one tree of spirituality and we stupidly take away those flowers those dead flowers and say, this is ours, this is ours, this is ours. So today's problem is fundamentalism. And this fundamentalism is working in everyone. Muslims are actually, I would say, are they have no finesse. That's why it's obvious. But Christians have great finesse, you see. They are also extremely fundamentalist. And the way we are doing things, we should be shocked. I recently I read a book called Vatican Connections, in which they showed the Vatican published two billion dollars of counterfeit securities and sold them through mafia. Can you imagine two billion dollars? And in London, if you live, you will feel like running away from Church of England because people are saying Christ was homosexual, he had bad relations with his mother, all kinds of horrible things that one cannot bear. They are talking and Church of England is sleeping and now they are appointing the clergymen or I would say the people, priests, who are homosexuals. Then the other day I read that there were women in America who were warned that do not go for ordain, ordination because the clergymen will harass you. Are they clergymen or what? How can they teach about God if they are like that? But once you get your self-realization, the Hindus start seeing the bad points among themselves, Christians start seeing the bad points among themselves, and also the Muslim starts. And you'll be surprised, the Jews now worship Christ in Sajoga. We have many Jews in Sajoga. And they all worship Christ, and we have Sajoga Center, even in Israel. Because they see that he was the truth. But when you are fundamentalist, you do not want to accept anything. You put the blinkers, and mostly it is business. Any one of them is nothing but business. The false gurus are business. Also, these people who talk of religion also cannot think that they are dulling the spirituality of people, that everybody has this feeling to rise. This integration you get in the light of the Spirit. Because as soon as you put your hands to anyone, say Khalil Gibran, Say, Muhammad Sahib himself. You ask a question, was Muhammad Sahib the incarnation of the primordial master? Immediately you'll start feeling tremendous vibration that he was, whatever one may say about him. But he was. They may say anything about Christ, nonsense. But you ask any question, any one of you who are realized souls, was Christ the incarnation of innocence? Was he the son of God? Immediately you start feeling vibrations. But if there is a false guru, a false personality, a false man, you ask the question and immediately you will feel the heat 
sometimes even the burning from that person. This is how you know the absolute truth about any person, about any situation, about any book or any kind of ideologies. Whether it is truth or not, only can be verified and judged through your vibrations because there is spirit flowing through. There are many people who are just mercenary, working for money, doing all kinds of nonsensical things. But ultimately you develop that personality of self-respect within you and you think, what am I doing? Is this the way? Even that thinking is not required, we just drop that all nonsense. I know people who have dropped their jobs, which were mercenary, which were wrong type of jobs in the mafias and all that, they have come to Sahaja Yoga. And now they have proper, sensible, dignified jobs. So the whatever we have lost comes back to us because now we know ourselves in the light of our spirit and we become really so powerful that now we can bear any amount of money given to us, we are not attracted. Any amount of power given to us, we are not attracted. Any amount of promises or anything, we are not bothered. Because we have risen above all these things and we can see very clearly that what is most important is our spirituality, our virtues, and we start enjoying our virtues. People always talk about peace, peace foundations. I have seen those people because of my husband who have been given Nobel Prizes and all that, but they have no peace within themselves. I don't know how they get these prizes just to have them outside going around, peace foundation. Peace is within yourself. Those who do not have peace within themselves, how can they spread peace? How can they give peace to others? But once you get your Realization, you become a peaceful personality. But greatest above all, the Spirit is the source of pure knowledge, absolute knowledge, pure knowledge, about anything. So immediately, because it is in your awareness, you know what is the correct thing to do, what is the righteousness, how to be on the right path, because you also get the strength to be on the right path. You have that strength, you become a powerful personality. You remember Christ standing before Mari Magdalini, and He said that those who think have not committed sin can throw a stone at her. And everybody stood back. But he said, just throw the stone at me. He didn't say at her, he said, throw the stone at me. What a courage! After all, what has got a saying to do with a prostitute? Nothing. But his courage, because they are not afraid of anyone but for God. And they are not afraid, it's the respectful awe for God that they have. So this is the state we have to achieve of such personality. But your attention itself gets enlightened. This is the best part of it. A person who has really evolved to that state, even a glance of this person can cure someone, can bring peace to someone, can satisfy someone, even a glance. So such a personality is quite potential in all of you. You all can achieve that potential because you are seekers of truth. And the Truth is nothing but the light of the Spirit. And once you have that light, you can have that kind of a consciousness that wherever you put your attention, that problem gets solved. 
that person is helped. International problems can be solved also if collectively you think of any problem like that. If a person is very troublesome to you, you can just put a protection on him and you'll be amazed, he will change. He'll be kind to you because your love acts, your compassion acts through your attention. The last, the most important thing that happens to you that you drop into the ocean of joy. Joy has no duality, it is not happiness, unhappiness, that comes through ego. But joy is a state where you are enjoying everything. You do not react to anything, just see everything and you are in the ocean of joy. So what is the question of getting sick? or getting bored. You are never bored when you are alone or whether you are with others. You enjoy because there's joy within you and the source of joy is the Spirit. Thus you become the Spirit. This is the status you achieve. It can be achieved very easily, but for human beings to eat food like is very difficult. He has to go round his head and eat it. So. Whatever is simple is real. Whatever is complicated is unreal. It is so vital today for you to get your realization that it works in such a simple manner. So don't listen to anybody who tells you, go on chanting for hours together. As I have seen this poor Buddhist going on a meo renge like that, spoiling his throat, getting cancer. You must have seen many people like that, chanting, 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 mad. See, you are not connected with God. See, what is this? The telephone is out of order, but where are you telephoning? It's stupid to do that. But you'll find, you know, Sahare Ramas now, there are so many who came to us are suffering from cancer of the throat, you know, and then say, chant, 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 chant. You they start chanting any name, they take, take Shiva's name. It's very dangerous because Shiva gets very angry, you see. Now supposing you have to meet the Queen of England and you go and start shouting, Elizabeth, 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 the police will arrest you there. <laughs> you must have some protocol. You should be able to enter into the, into the protocol and you have to be in the kingdom of God. Then even once you think of God, you are blessed. Don't have to go on pestering Him like this, as if He's in your pocket, just take out your pocket telephone, go on like that. All this is nonsense. And once they do all this chanting business, I've seen they put some sort of a spirit in you, they just mesmerize you. Then you don't know what's happening. The other day we had three, four people complaining they went to some lady where they paid a lot of money and now they have got pain in the stomach, they have got pain in the heart. I mean, at least your health should be looked after. There should be some concern about it. So one has to understand this kind of madness must be given. People have seen even Christians pray sometimes, they break their heads, they shout at God, they say all kinds of things, but God is not listening to them, what's the use of doing all this? Prayer is only possible after you have got connection, otherwise there's no use praying to God, because you are not connected. And that's why Christ has said you are to be born again. Everybody has said, Muhammad Sahib has said that you have to be a wali. Everyone has said that. Now, if you just ask for it, you can get your Realization tonight. But after that you have to remember that this is not an individual thing, that you sit at home and say, all right, I'm doing this meditation this way. It's not going to work out. 
you have to be collective you have to meet each other wherever there is the program is or whatever it is like a nail which is cut out is will never grow so you have to be attached to the body of sajogis also you have to spread you have to spread sajoga when you spread sajoga you will go deeper and deeper and deeper and then you will discover your divinity and you will know how glorious you are how great you are and why are you here to do the work of god to be an absolute beautiful instrument into his hand May God bless you all. Yesterday we have had too many questions, I think, and I think today we could have very few because yesterday's questions. I, I'm very good at answering, you know. Because I've been answering for the last twenty years now, so I've become quite an expert, and I know all the styles and types there. But this is a mental feat only. This is only at mental activity. What I want that you should not have any obstruction of your mind when you are meditating. That's why I said just ask the question. But if you just go on like that. Then it's just a mental level, and it is no guarantee that if I answered your questions, that you will definitely get your realization. On the contrary, mental activity should be less. It's better that you should leave mental activity for tomorrow, and you won't have much tomorrow. So ask questions which are relevant. I have told you yesterday that I am not here to take anything from you. I am here. To give you the key of your own benevolence, by which you will have deeper faith in whatever you have been doing. Like supposing you are Christian, you will know what Christ is, and also you will know what other great incarnations were. Your knowledge will expand. Even the children who come to Sahaj Yoga have. Become so intelligent that most of the scholarships they bag, they pass their highest examination in record time. It's something surprising that when the Kundalini goes into the head, how one becomes so alert, so active, at the same time so compassionate. So I would request you to understand the value of your being, your self-realization, and don't waste your energy. Into something frivolous, but pay little attention to your self-realization, and then next year I'll be here to see great masters of Sahaj Yoga sitting here. You all have to become your own masters. That's what I want to see. So, any question there? Those who have been yesterday asking questions need not ask. And those who are new, I must say, they were, didn't listen to my yesterday's lecture, so they shouldn't ask about yesterday. But today's things, if they think, whatever it is, I mean, I am willing to answer. Question. Uh, what is your method of self-realization? That you will see now. It's spontaneous. It's like a seed being sprouted. It's a living process of a living energy, which spontaneously act. Once you have gained this new sense of consciousness, how do you stop repeating the things that you have done in the past and would ra rather not do again? I didn't follow this. Once you have got your realization, mm. how does one stop doing things that are against our better nature? 
You mean it's your habits? Yeah. I see. You see, once you get your realization, as I told you yesterday, a simile, that you are holding a snake. This, this, this works out best, this simile works out best. And it is all darkness, and you are all blind, can't see it. Till the snake bites, you won't leave the snake because you'll say it's a rope, whatever one may tell you. So, if you are not blind, and if there is little light, you'll immediately throw it away. That's what. Overnight, you'll be surprised. Overnight, people have given up drugs. Overnight. Many, many people. And alcoholism. So many bad habits. Overnight. I'm myself amazed how powerful they are. I didn't say anything, don't do this, don't do that. I've never said it. But they have done it. Because you are powerful within yourself. Only thing is like this instrument has to be connected to the mains, you have to be connected to the mains. Then it starts working. What happens to one's karma uh, after we are self-realized? Yeah. You see, you see here the ego, the yellow one and the blue one. The yellow one is the ego that, that says we have done this work and that work, and we think this is our karma. Animals don't think that way. Animals do whatever they have to do, and they are bound by God's love, and they never feel they have done bad karmas or good karmas. They never count that. We are the ones. Because we have got a consciousness by which we say this is bad karma, this is good karmas, and all that in our ego, it is settled there. And the another one is the conditioning on the left hand side. So when the Kundalini passes through your agya, through the optic chasma, then she sucks in these two. She sucks in your karmas and also your sanskaras, means your conditioning. And it opens out your limbic area, like that. So the karmas are finished once for all. Why does evil exist? Is it a contrast for good? <laughs> evil is created by human beings, not by God. Because God has given us freedom to go to hell or to heaven. This freedom had to be given at certain stage because ultimately they have enjoyed the complete freedom. Like in school you are taught two plus two. But then you are given little freedom in the college to find out for yourself, so that you are ultimately free to teach. That's why this freedom was given, and many have sought for evil things. What can you do about it? I cannot take away freedom. God won't take away your freedom. It is there. In your freedom, you have to seek the truth. Is it dangerous to raise the Kundalini without yogic training? Not at all. Kundalini is your mother. She is your individual mother. She knows everything about you. And she's like a tape recorder. She knows your past, she knows everything, what you have been and what you have to be. When you were born, your mother took all the labor pains upon her, herself. In the same way, this loving mother takes all the pains upon herself. There are books and books, I know, who have said that Kundalini awakening is very difficult, it gives you this pain, 
that pain and all that. But I don't know how they write this under what authority. Maybe if you go and put your hands, fingers into the plug and then say, this hall is horrible, this hall gives you shocks. Because they have tried something which is very wrong, that may be the reason this must have happened. But Kundalini, when she rises, she rises in her own majesty. Not only that, but she rises comforting you, looking after you. She knows what your problem is. She knows her child very well. So don't listen to these people, they have written all these books because perhaps they don't want you to get Realization. That's the only way you can get Realization. How can that be? If God is the only power and the only reality, how can we have power in the liver <laughs> and get disease? You see, God is not like the rock of Gibraltar, right? God is the power and He has given us powers. If He had not given us powers, you could not have talked even, you would not have stood up. He gives power to us slowly and steadily till you become a human being. And now the last power is the spiritual power. He is the source of power. We have so many lights here. How do they get the power when there is only one powerhouse? What's he say? So if we get this this realization tonight, then what do we do with it? That of course is very easy. We have got beautiful ashrams and centers in your city. We have follow on where you have to go, they'll tell you what is to be done. And also you'll be told about everything that you want. Of course, free of charge. You don't have to pay at all. There's nothing like intensive and all that in Sahaja Yoga. <laughs> and everything is available to you. Everything. This knowledge is all going to be available to you free of charge. But you must give some time, you see. And in this light, when you are realized souls, this subtle knowledge you know so fast, I'm myself surprised how the people who have never even heard of the word of Kundalini have become such experts in one month time. I would say now, <clears throat> we'll have... Can you see me there, up there? You can see me, all of you? So now we'll have the session for Self-Realization, which will take 10 to 15 minutes. So, first thing, I have to request you to please take out your shoes, if you don't mind. And you are not to leave for these 10-15 minutes. If you want to go out for a while, you can go and come back, because these 10-15 minutes, you have to be there. So you can just go, I'll wait for five minutes, you can go if you want to go, and then come back. All right.
Now please take out your shoes, both your shoes, and put your both the feet at a distance from each other. Because as I as can you fix this up a little? Stool, so you see, falls off. Ah, no, it's better. Because the left and the right are two energies, as you know, the left is the energy of desire, and the Kundalini is the energy of pure desire. So you have to put your left hand towards me like this, keeping on your lap. Now, the right hand is the carrier of the energy of action. So we have to use the right hand to nourish our centers one by one on the left hand side. Before we start, we'll show you these centers which you have to nourish on the left hand side with your right hand. It's very simple. So first of all you put your right hand on your heart and left hand towards me. Then you have to put your hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Heart is the abode of your spirit, while this is the center of your mastery, which is created by great masters. Then you have to put your hand in the lower portion of your abdomen on the left-hand side. This is the center of pure knowledge. Pure knowledge which manifests on your central nervous system. Which gives you the power to work it out. The divine laws. Then you raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen again. Then on your heart. And then in the corner of your neck and your shoulder. This is the center we catch or is spoiled when we feel guilty and is a very dangerous center because it gives you diseases like angina also spondylitis and the troubles that arise from lethargic organs. So please hold it tight here. And then turn your head to your right. Now you have to take your right hand onto your forehead across. And Put down your head on it. This is the center for forgiving everyone. You have to now take your hand, back side of your head, push back your head fully upward. Without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, you have to ask forgiveness from the divine power. Now you have to stretch your hand, stretch your palm 
I put the center of your palm on top of your fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now push back your fingers. By pushing back your fingers, you put a good pressure on your skull. Now put down your head. Put down your head and push back your fingers. And now move your scalp slowly, seven times clockwise. Hmm. That's all we have to do. But now there are two conditions which you have to fulfill. Otherwise, the Kundalini may not reach its destination. The first one is that you have to forgive everyone. You have to forgive everyone altogether, in general. You may say it is very difficult to forgive. So many say like that, I'm trying. There's nothing to try. It's a myth. Whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. And those who have troubled you, or have tor tortured you, you are torturing yourself. Instead, they are having a good time. So, best thing is that you forgive each and every person without thinking about them individually. But just say, I forgive all of them altogether. Now, this is very, very important, very important, because this center, which is in the optic chasma, is like that, absolutely closed. Unless you forgive, it won't open. It's the greatest weapon we have got is to forgive, to get rid of all the headaches. Just, you have to forgive. Please remember, you have to forgive. Yesterday, I had to work on so many people because they had not forgiven. That's why I'm saying it, the first condition. Normally I say as the second condition, but I think the foremost condition is to forgive. A very surprising, those who are Christians should forgive. Minimum. They are the worst as far as forgiving is concerned, I find. You have to forgive. Please forgive everyone. Just say it. Just say it. It's a myth. It's just a myth. I tell you, it's a myth. So please forgive everyone. Now, the second condition is that you have to forget your past and you have to be in the present. Means you should know that you are not guilty at all. Forget about your mistakes. Now don't feel guilty. Now say with full faith in yourself that you are not guilty at all, because if you do not say that, this horrible center will stop your Kundalini. And it is very much catching. Yesterday also, Today also. We feel extremely guilty, I don't know why. There is no need to feel guilty. If you think you have done mistakes, just face it, finished. But not to feel guilty is very important. Again I request you, do not feel guilty at all. Always I said this was the first condition. But I think forgiveness is the best, first of all. And second is that you know that you are not guilty at all, because this divine power is the ocean of forgiveness. It is so powerful that whatever mistakes you might commit, it forgives you completely, it dissolves all your mistakes. It's very powerful. 
So have faith in it. Because you shouldn't stop your realization because of that. So I request you again and again that please forgive yourself and forgive others so that you do not feel guilty and that you do not think of all these horrible people who have troubled you. Just forgive them. Now, I would like to assure you that you are all capable of getting Realization. So do not have any diffidence about it. Do not think that you cannot get it. Do not doubt yourself by any chance. Have full confidence in yourself and it will work out. Because Kundalini is the power of pure desire and if you have that desire, whether you are aware or not, it will work. So I am again requesting you that have full confidence in yourself. You have to now close your eyes. Before that you can take out your spectacles because it can help your eyesight also. <coughs> now, please put your left hand towards me like this. Those who are sitting on the ground can sit with normal way. There's no need to put both the feet on the ground, just sit very comfortably. Yes, that's much better. But those who are sitting on the chair have to put their feet apart from each other, left hand towards me, right hand on the heart. And now close your eyes. Here you have to say, with full confidence in yourself, a question you have to ask me. You can call me Mother or Sri Mataji. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times in your heart. Mother, am I the Spirit? This is a very fundamental question. Please ask this question. Mother, am I the Spirit? Now, if you are the Spirit, you are your master, your guide. So now please put your right hand on the left hand side of your abdomen, in the upper portion. All right. Now, can you go, madam? All right. Somebody should help her to go out. Let her carry her karmas, you know, she won't stop. Look at this. She's trying to save you. All right, don't let get disturbed. So now, Please put your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and push it down. If you are the Spirit, you are your Master. So please ask me another question, a very fundamental question. Mother, am I my own master? Ask this question three times. When you are now asking this question, I have to tell you 
that I respect your freedom and I cannot force you to have pure knowledge. You have to ask for it. So please take your hand into the lower portion of your abdomen and press it hard on the left hand side. Here the center has got six petals. So you have to ask in your freedom for pure knowledge. So please say six times, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. As soon as you ask for pure knowledge, Kundalini starts rising. And so we have to nourish our upper centers with full confidence. So now raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. And here, you have to say 10 times with full confidence in yourself. Mother, I am my own master. Please say it with full confidence. I am my own master. Mother, I am my own master. I've told you the fundamental truth about you is that you are not this body, not this mind, not this ego, not these conditionings, but you are the pure spirit. So now raise your right hand on to your heart. Here again, with full confidence, you have to say it 12 times. Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please say 12 times, Mother, I am the pure spirit. This divine power is the ocean of all the knowledge, is the ocean of compassion, love and bliss. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. So whatever mistakes you might have committed in the past, can be easily dissolved by the power of this ocean of compassion. So have faith in it. And now raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and shoulder and turn your head to your right full. Take back your hand as far as possible. Here, 
You have to say sixteen times with full confidence in yourself. Sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say it sixteen times. Forget about your past, your karmas and all that. Just forget it. You have to say, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Say it with full confidence. You don't have to judge yourself. Let the Kundalini judge you. I have already told you, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. It's a myth. But it's very important that you have to forgive everyone in general, not at all thinking about anyone individually. But in general, you have to just say from your heart, not how many times, Mother, I forgive everyone. Mother, I forgive everyone. Mother, I forgive everyone. Say it from your heart. Please say it from your heart. Otherwise it becomes very difficult. I cannot forgive for you. You have to forgive yourself. So please say it. Now raise your right hand onto your forehead across and put down your head as far as possible, resting on this hand. Now here you say, with full confidence, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. Say it from your heart, not how many times. Please say it from your heart. Now, take back your hand, the back side of your head, and push back your head as far as possible. Here, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your satisfaction, push back your head. Just for your satisfaction you have to say, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistakes knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Say this from your heart, not how many times again. Please say this from your heart. Push back your head. Now, please stretch your palm. Put the center of your palm on top of the fontanel bone area and push back your fingers. Now put down your head, push back your fingers nicely, otherwise there would be a proper pressure on your scalp. Push back your fingers, put down your head as far as possible. Here again I respect your freedom and I cannot force self-realization on you. So, move your scalp seven times slowly clockwise. At the same time, seven times you have to say, Mother, please give me self-realization.
Now, please take down your hands. Open your eyes slowly. <clears throat> Put both the hands towards me like this. Now, put your right hand like this. You can watch me without thinking. You can watch me now without thinking. That means the first stage where you are thoughtlessly aware. Now, put right hand towards me like this. Bend your head and see for yourself if there's a cool or a hot breeze coming out of your head, a breath coming out of your head. Don't doubt it. Please don't doubt. Just see. Sometimes you get it very far, sometimes very close. But don't put your hand on top of your head, but away from it. And see for yourself, you can move your hand up or downward, sideways, to see if there's a cool breeze or a hot breeze coming out of your head. Now, please put the left hand towards me. Left hand towards me. Left hand. And now, put down your head. Now, see with the right hand. If there's a cool breeze coming out of your head, or a hot breeze coming, you have not forgiven that there will be hot. So, please forgive. Even now, you can forgive everyone. Just see yourself if there's a cool breeze coming out of your head. Now, put the right hand towards me again, like this. Bend your head again nicely and see for yourself again from your fontanelle bone area where it was a soft bone, there is cool breeze or hot breeze coming out or not. Just see for yourself. You have to certify yourself. I am not going to certify you. Now, you can push back your hands like this, stretch them upward, stretch back your head and ask a question three times. Any one of these questions you have to ask three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Divine Love? Mother, is this the Paramachaitanya? Ask one of these questions. One of these questions three times. Now take down your hands, please. All those who have felt the cool breeze or the hot in their hand, on their fingertips, or through the fontanelle bone area, please raise both your hands. I bow to you all people, all of you have felt for the first time this all-pervading power except for one or two persons. For the first time, now only you have to know how to use this connection and how to fix this connection. Also those who have not felt today can be easily worked out by Sajogis and they can feel it. Thank you very much. I'm going away from Sydney and then I'll be going to America. Next year again I'll be here. I hope by that time all of you will become great Sajogis. The first state is of thoughtless awareness. Second is of doubtless awareness where you have no doubts and you can start raising the Kundalini. Third is the Sahaja Yogi, where he knows each and everything about Sahaja Yoga and 
can give realizations to others, can cure others, can do wonders. All his dynamism is manifested. May God bless you.